I've been using the S22 Ultra as my daily driver for a few months now. Do I still stand by my statement of it being the best phone that you can buy? Let's talk about that. The S22 Ultra isn't a slouch, but that doesn't mean there isn't a catch. There always is. When it comes to tech, nothing is perfect across the board. I switched from the 13 Pro to the S22 Ultra because I was bored. I wanted something that was exciting and customizable. I wanted a phone that worked around me and not vice versa. That being said, there are problems and some of them are deal breakers. I like to make honest videos and I like to withhold any bias that I have with any specific brands. I think it's important for a content creator to be open and mindful about what's out there, especially when we preach our opinions and views about a product. For context, I've been a majority iPhone user, and I'm pretty sure that's been very clear. However, I've gone back and forth quite a bit, and when it comes to the S22 Ultra, there's just a couple of things that I can't really get over. Camera stutter. It's still here. I feel like it's been marginally improved since the June update, which came really slow to North America, but honestly, that could be a placebo. I feel like I miss about 20% of the photos that I take on my phone due to the stutter lag. Sometimes it's pretty instantaneous. However, most of the time, it takes upwards of two seconds to process a photo. Luckily, I personally don't take very many photos that involve any moving subjects, but even then, I don't feel confident in the S22 Ultra being the only camera I carry around. It's kind of a shame because clearly the only limitation here is software. The actual hardware and the cameras involved are like mind-blowingly good. Like, I have zero complaints about the actual image that is taken. However, today, for the most part, most people's cameras are their phones. And if somebody is relying on their phone as a camera, it better be a good camera. Like if there was something really important that I needed to take a photo of and this just wasn't cutting it, I don't know how I'd feel about it because this thing was almost 2000 Canadian dollars. It's just that this shouldn't be an issue and yet it still is. Speaking of the camera, most apps that I use like Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, still do not have the native camera support. Like when you're taking a video or a photo, it's like a screen grab of the image. It just, it, do, it doesn't make any sense. It lacks sharpness, depth, detail, like literally everything that makes this camera good. It's just gone as soon as you use any sort of third party app. Like as a content creator, I kind of find it annoying because sometimes I just want to make a quick short, but I can't. It like, it's actually that limiting to the point where if I want to make some sort of short form content, I have to grab this camera and it just becomes a whole process of editing and uploading from my computer when I could simply just grab the device and point it at me. It, again, this is just a software thing and there's a chance that this could be fixed as well. Obviously, the problem is that when it comes to Android apps, these developers have to make applications work for multiple phones. For iPhone, it's not a problem because they only release three or four phones a year. It's just that when it comes to Android, there's literally hundreds, if not thousands of smartphones that are released year round. But like, this is a flagship. This is from a company that has most of the market share when it comes to Android devices. Why is this top of the line flagship not getting these updates or not getting these quality of life improvements? Why is that a thing? Like Samsung sells millions of phones guaranteed, yet when it comes to these applications, especially ones that Google makes, which is the, the most ironic thing about it, like YouTube, why is the camera still a screen grab? Like, you can tell I'm pretty heated about that because that, that one's actually a big deal to me. Now, another thing is I use Spotify at work for music and podcasts. I have it running pretty much all day. I work in my bay alone, so it's like the only entertainment that I get while I'm working on vehicles. Now, the problem is I can't control Spotify through my lock screen. It's just, it doesn't exist. Apparently you can with YouTube music, but like I've been a Spotify user for an extremely long time and I don't feel like paying for a worse service to be honest with you. But for Spotify and pretty much all of the other music or streaming apps that I've tried, this now playing feature just doesn't exist. This is something that actually really bugs me on a day-to-day -day basis and probably the most annoying thing that I've come across. Now, I know you can root the phone and stuff like that, but as just a stock, one UI experience, do not expect this feature. This is something that was extremely useful to me because if I'm listening to a podcast and there's an ad, I can take the phone out of my pocket 
and just double tap to skip a few seconds. But now it's a whole big ordeal because I have to get into my phone. So if I'm wearing a respirator at work, I can't unlock my phone using the face unlock and I can't use the fingerprint unlock because I have gloves on. So I have to like awkwardly move my hand around my phone one handed to do my pattern while I'm wearing the gloves. And then once I unlock the phone, I have to swipe down from the notification panel and then do it. It adds so much difficulty to something that could just be done very easily. It, I don't understand. This sounds like a rant and like it kind of is, but understand that throughout the day, this becomes a chore. The whole point of a smartphone is to be an extension of you. It's a tool, but it gets very complicating when you have to start working around it and you have to come up with things and do all these hacks and stuff just to be able to make it easier for you to use. Now, after using the S22 Ultra for quite a while now, my battery isn't as good as I thought it would be. When I got the phone, I was able to get around seven hours of screen on time. I guess with just more background apps running and all of the stuff that I have on my phone now, it's somewhere around four to five hours, which doesn't really instill the most confidence in me for long term. Like I wonder what that would look like a year from now. Granted, there are days where I don't charge it. And then into the next day, I still have about 20, 30% to last me up until lunchtime or something. Those are days where I don't really use the phone that often, but the battery can last. And four to five hours of screen on time doesn't really sound like a lot for me. It's not bad, but it just seems a lot worse than when I got it, which is something that I want to clarify because in the last video, I made it sound so good and I had people asking me questions about it. And yes, that was my personal experience with it. And now it doesn't seem to be as good. So I'm just saying this to be as transparent as I can be because I feel like I've sold some of you guys on this phone and I don't wanna be that kind of person, if you know what I mean. This video isn't all negative though. If you're wondering if I'm going back to iPhone, I'm not. But like I said, I also don't lie to my audience. I have made so far two extremely positive videos praising this phone. And I don't think it's really fair to me or fair to you if I don't address some of the issues that I've had personally. The truth, the truth is this is probably the best Android phone that you can buy. Is it the best phone? It's subjective. It just depends on who you are. I think the iPhone serves its purpose on being a fast and efficient phone that doesn't do too much. It's optimized, it's nearly perfect, but it's not for everyone. I've had more fun with the S22 Ultra than I ever have with a phone, and I owned the Z Fold 3 for about a month. Pretty much all of the problems that I mentioned can be fixed entirely through software updates. Even the battery life. This chip isn't anywhere near the efficiency of the A14, but this phone does have 1300 more milliamp hours than the iPhone Pro Max. If all it takes is a little software, a little RAM management optimization to fix this phone's battery, why not? You know, when comparing it to the iPhone, this camera is objectively better. The display is objectively better. There's just so many things about it that make it a better phone, but it's not the best phone all around, right? For me, it is, but no, I'm not going back to iPhone, or at least anytime soon, I guess. But I do think that Android could use a little bit more love from some of its developers. Like these are flagship phones. Come on guys, this isn't like 2013, this is 2022. We can work a little bit harder. But that's pretty much all. I mean, my purchasing decision was influenced on YouTubers as well. So I just wanna make sure I'm clearing the air about some of the issues that I've had with it personally. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it or I mean, hate it, I guess, leave a like down below. Let me know how you feel. And uh, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.